Hi, it's that time of the year again for us to build a Christmas project and this year I've designed a Christmas star on a very large PCB as you can see here that has been supplied by our sponsor for this video, PCBWay. So this PCB is made from 2mm PCB, it's just a two layer design with a whole bunch of LEDs on the front as you can see and then just some electronics at the back here. So we'll jump straight in with the assembly and then we'll talk about some of the interesting features about this particular design. So this PCB is a double-sided load and I don't have the facility to load up all of the components on both sides at once and run it through a reflow oven. It's also a very large PCB. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to assemble this side up first using a lead-free solder paste and I'm going to put this on the hot plate because the hot plate should uh, be able to heat up this section on its own. Um, the reason why I'm doing it this way is because some of these components like this large inductor and these capacitors here are a bit tricky to work with a hot air gun or with a solder iron because they've got quite a lot of thermal mass um, and it will just absorb all of the heat. So by reflowing this section first, then when it comes to this side, I can use a solder paste and just work along this with the hot air gun. Uh, possibly I might use a low temperature um, solder paste instead of bismuth one which will make this really really quick and easy to reflow with the hot air gun. So that all went together really nicely and it was pretty quick to assemble in the end with the vacuum uh, pick and place tool. Uh, all of these LEDs, I think there's over 300 on here, took about 18 minutes to place. So that's pretty good going for doing it by hand. Uh, and as I said, I am redesigning that pick and place tool. We'll do a video on it soon. Finally, I've got all of the parts to try and have a go with it, including some of these little vacuum pumps, which are pretty cheap uh, from AliExpress and it should mean that everyone's able to build one. Uh, the only problem that I've got you might just be able to see it slightly as the solder mask has discolored just very slightly in this area where it was in direct contact with the hot plate. Uh, we've got the nice brilliant white over here but it's just gone a little bit yellow here. Uh, I might try giving it a scrub with alcohol but I think it's permanent damage to the solder mask but it doesn't really um, cause too much of a problem. So everything's all put together. We've got some electronics on the back um, and on the front we've got all of these RGB LEDs but these are the self color changing type so they've got a little chip in each one uh, you apply power and they change color by themselves so let's have a quick look at those so here are the leds and i'll put a link to the aliexpress listing where i bought these from i think they were about 30 pounds for a thousand of them delivered and these are the type where you just apply uh, three volts or so and they fade through the colors by themselves so this isn't the type where the leds are blinking and flashing these ones just nicely fade in and out through various different colours of the rainbow. So really quite a nice effect. So basically I've placed loads of those all over the star. But what I've done is I've wired them into groups. So um, they're in concentric rows basically. So all of the outsides are connected together. Then the next row in are all connected together and so on. So I think we've got five different channels here. So we can make it blink between colours um, to give more of an animated effect. But the problem that would have is obviously with these LEDs, every time you power them up, they start again from the start. So every time you blink them, they'd all be red, as we saw with that um, colour pattern. So what I thought I'd do is have a look to see if there's a different way that we can drive these LEDs. Right, so I've just attached one of these LEDs to this PCB to make the demonstration a little bit easier, but a couple of observations that I found about these LEDs. First of all, uh, when you first apply power, 
you get a brief flash of white light as you can see so uh, if you blink it really fast actually all you see um, is just the white being emitted from the LED chip. The second thing is um, obviously every time you apply power it always starts off from red so if I disconnect power and then reattach it's gone back to the beginning again and the other thing that I've noticed is this appears to have all the current limiting built in it's either got some uh, resistors built in or it's just using um, some output FETs on the microcontroller to limit the current because as this changes through the colors the current from the bench power supply is varying but the voltage into it is basically uh, the same so it's not like the LEDs are clamping the supply rail which means that we can have a whole bunch of these in parallel without any current limiting resistors uh, so that simplifies the PCBs quite a lot. Now as I said every time you apply power it goes back to the beginning so if we were to flash the LED star, basically all you'd see is red or, or a brief flash of white and then red every time, which wouldn't be very good. Um, so it got me thinking, uh, basically we've got a microcontroller in there or some chip and then three LEDs, but possibly that chip will run at a lower voltage than is required to illuminate the uh, LED chip. So if we bring down the supply voltage, you can see basically you don't get any light from the LED from about 1.6 volts upwards and if we bring the power back up you can see it doesn't start off at red so what that possibly means that we're able to do is we could instead of just turning the LEDs on and off we could have um, three different options we could either have it at 3.3 volts at something like 1.7, 1.6 volts, which will keep the LED chip running but not illuminate the LED, and then we could have fully off as well. And what that means is, uh, if we wanted to, we could keep the LEDs colour changing but still blink them um, so they don't always show red. But then it also got me thinking, if we're able to keep the chip going the whole time, we could actually apply a PWM waveform as well to do some brightness control of these LEDs. So that's what we're going to explore with the actual star today. I didn't get a chance to try it with a signal generator, but I'm almost certain it should work. So that's what we're going to try today. I'll just quickly show you the schematic and then we'll try and see if these ideas actually work. So here is the schematic for the LED star. On the right hand side, obviously we've got all of the LEDs. In the center, we've got the LED drivers. We've got a massively overkill microcontroller on the left here. Uh, the reason for that is because it just happened to be what I had in stock and some of these microcontrollers are in short supply. And then at the top here, we've got our power supply rails. So what happens is our supply voltage comes in and goes straight to this DC to DC converter. This is a fairly powerful one and this is the one that's going to power all of the LEDs. It's adjustable, I've put a potentiometer on here, so I think we can get somewhere between about uh, two and a half volts and uh, close to five volts from this. So we need to adjust this depending on what works best for the LEDs. We've got a 3.3 volt rail for the microcontroller, so just a linear regulator. And I put in various zero ohm links so that we can power it from different supply rails to reduce the dissipation. And we've got the uh, lower supply voltage, this is just to keep the chips in the LEDs running but not actually illuminate the LEDs so an LM317 and again this is adjustable so we can adjust this right down to about one and a half volts uh, and annoyingly I have noticed that I uh, have made a slight mistake on the schematic I've put the input supply for the LM317 as the output of this which means uh, we probably haven't quite got enough headroom here to regulate at the voltage that I was intending to. Uh, I think these need about 1.25 volts um, voltage drop across them to regulate properly. In the center section are our LED drivers and there's two drivers per channel. The top one here controls the full power into the LEDs and we've got a little FDN 304P MOSFET to drive those. And then there's another driver which controls the standby voltage into the LEDs. So this one doesn't have to deal with very much current at all. Those, um, the little chip inside the LED when there's no LEDs illuminating consumes hardly any power. So we've just used a simple BJT here with a diode in series to prevent the voltage here being fed back into this transistor and potentially causing some issues with the voltage regulator. So that's our driver circuit and 
Basically, we've got two control lines per channel, LED PWM and LED Keep Alive. And those are all connected to a massively overkill microcontroller. Um, so two control lines per channel. You can see we hardly utilize this micro at all, uh, but it just happened to be what I have in stock because most of the PIC micros seem to be out of stock at the moment for various reasons. Um, so it was easy just to use what I already had available. Right, so let's power this up. And it's drawing about 12 milliamps. That sounds pretty reasonable. And we've got 12 volts going in. So first of all, we just want to adjust the LED supply voltage. So I've put a test point over here. It's currently set to 3.17. We want to adjust that up to about 3.4 volts or so. So let's tweak that. And then the standby supply, which currently is hanging off that regulator. So, uh, I mean, that is actually working. Uh, it looked like about 1.7 should be fine. When it's under load, I suspect this might uh, fluctuate. So we may need to make that modification to power this directly from the 12 volt supply. But at the moment, it is sitting there at 1.7. Um, so we'll, we will need to keep an eye on that. We'll get the oscilloscope in a moment to have a look at what it does. Uh, but let's put some firmware on the PCB and first of all, just check that we can control all of the LEDs. And that's it done. It's drawing a couple of hundred milliamps, so that sounds like it's doing something. Let's take a look. And yeah, we're just blinking slowly inwards. Uh, it looks like we've got one faulty LED just up here. It gave a brief flash of white, but then it doesn't illuminate red for some reason. Uh, but all the others appear to be illuminated, so we'll need to swap that one out in a moment. And you can see what I mean. Every time it illuminates the LEDs, you get that brief flash of white um, before it starts going to red. And if these were on longer, we'd start seeing it color change. So let's enable that standby voltage at about 1.6 volts and see if we still get this same behavior. Okay, and yeah, there we go. So that appears to be working quite nicely. So none of these you can see are illuminated, but it's certainly keeping the little chip inside it running. Uh, now we're getting a few little bits here where they're starting to get out of sync. Uh, that's perfectly fine. That's to be expected. Uh, they've got no synchronization with each other. So some of these are going to start changing color faster than others. But as you can see now, we're not getting that flash of white light and it's not starting from red every time. Now we can exploit this design in the firmware. If we want it to blink that white, we can turn off the uh, standby voltage. And if we want it to restart from the beginning because it's got too out of sync, we can also do that. So that looks like it's working properly. The next thing is whether we can actually PWM these LEDs to change the brightness because as you can see, the standby is working fine. I don't see any reason why a PWM waveform on top of uh, those two voltages to cause any issue. Uh, but what we'll quickly have a look at on the oscilloscope is what that standby voltage is looking like and seeing if it's actually able to regulate properly uh, despite that relatively small amount of headroom uh, from its supply voltage. Right, so let's check the regulator. So first of all, we've got the output from the DC to DC converter. And that's regulated quite happily, about 3.8 volts, and you can see it's nice and smooth. If we look at the standby voltage as well, uh, we can see that's also staying in regulation at about 1.8 volts. So it looks like we've got just enough headroom there between the two supply rails to keep that LM317 in regulation. And then if we take a look at one of the outputs to the LEDs, uh, we can see this is sort of the standby voltage just keeping the LED alive and then this is when it gets turned on briefly uh, and that is working quite nicely. So let's try applying a PWM waveform to these LEDs. So I was just resting my finger on the PCB and then I noticed my finger was getting pretty hot. Uh, it looks like these MOSFETs are getting a little bit warmer than I would have liked. Uh, the one at the top is the one that's driving the outside ring and that's getting the hottest, probably at about 74, 75 degrees C. Uh, but you can see in real time the transistors turning on and off, which is quite interesting. So I might just quickly check the data sheet to make sure I've spec these MOSFETs properly. 
So that thermal image actually I found a little bit alarming because uh, although it's not clear with this particular thermal camera, both the NPN transistor and the P-channel MOSFET are getting hot. You can see there's two components getting warm. And when we take a look at the schematic, so these are the two transistors that are getting hot. So we've got a MOSFET which we would expect to get a little bit warm, but Q2 definitely should not be getting warm. That's only driving the gate. In fact, the highest load it's going to see is this 10k resistor that it's pulling down to ground, plus the brief spike of current we see as we um, try and charge the gate here. So this shouldn't be getting warm at all. And in fact, when we probe the gate of the MOSFET, you can see it's being pulled up to 3.3 volts. That's absolutely fine. But this is the point where it's turned on, and it's only dropping to 2.5 volts, which means uh, we're only turning the gate on by a very small amount. The on resistance is very high, so obviously the MOSFET's getting hot. But for some reason, we are not able to pull the gate all the way down to zero volts. And if I purposely try and pull down the gate with an additional 1K resistor, those LEDs stay illuminated dimly, but we still are not pulling it down to zero volts, which is quite unusual and possibly suggests... Um, those MOSFETs might be damaged. Possibly I wrecked them when I soldered them on. But I need to do a little bit of investigation work here because it shouldn't be an issue uh, pulling the gate of the MOSFET down. It kind of suggests that the MOSFET's gone faulty and then I need to find out why. Right, so I've just very crudely soldered some legs onto this SOT23 part. Hopefully it'll stay together long enough. And we've got the P Catalyst DCA75 Pro. Now, the last time I did a video using this device... You may remember the graphic display had gone all funky. Apparently that is a known issue and they will repair them for free. So they sent me out a new device actually. Um, so let's see how this one works. And you may notice it's backlit as well, which is quite a nice feature. And it's come out as a PNP transistor. Which is interesting because I definitely remember getting some FDN 304P MOSFETs out of a bag. So maybe I've soldered in the incorrect parts. Let me just have a quick look at the PCB. Right, so it's my fault. I have placed the components in the wrong place. So I've got the uh, P-channel MOSFET where a PNP transistor is supposed to be and the PNP transistor where the N-channel MOSFET is supposed to be. So uh, yeah, this one was supposed to be a P channel MOSFET and in fact it's a PNP transistor. So what had happened is I'd accidentally switched this transistor with this one and it turns out they are effectively pin compatible in that the gate drain and source are in the same place as the base collector and emitter so it's still sort of working. The problem was we had no base resistor um, and all of the base current was trying to be sunk through here. We're basically destroying this transistor so uh, I need to swap those five PNP transistors out for FDN 304s and hopefully then we shouldn't get any of that heating issue. And just a very small amount of heating. So that is much better. And let's check what the gate waveform looks like. Yeah, so there's the gate. And you can see it being pulled down all the way down to zero volts. And the output... Yeah, that is all working properly. So that's that problem fixed. Uh, I'm glad I spotted that because um, that could have caused us a problem. Uh, let's put the PWM firmware on there and see how that behaves. Right, so I put some firmware on here that now PWMs the LEDs at about 100 hertz. And for the first 10 seconds or so, the standby power is disabled. So it's just literally driving the LEDs with a waveform, um, a square wave of 100 hertz. And then after 10 seconds, we enable the standby power. And that's where we should be able to keep the LED chip still alive. So let's turn it on. And it starts off white. If you remember, every time we applied power, the LEDs initially illuminated white before changing to red. So we actually get a nice white pattern. And then after 10 seconds, we should see it changing to red. Now we're getting some weird blinking. I think this is possibly because the standby voltage is just a little bit too low. I think I tweaked it lower. Uh, when I was fault finding just a moment ago, although that does look pretty cool. Um, you can see we're actually able to control the brightness of the LEDs really well. Uh, it's just some of them are misbehaving. So let's try um, adjusting the standby voltage up a little bit. Uh, 
and see if we can stop that twinkling. There we go. So now we've just got past presumably the minimum voltage. Just a, Some of them were just a little bit different to the others. Uh, we're going to get variation from chip to chip, but now they're all staying enabled. Obviously, we still need to change that one LED. That one's not behaving properly. But there we go. That is behaving quite nicely now, and we're able to control the brightness to any brightness that we want. Right, so here's what our waveform looks like into one of the LED channels. So zero volts is down here. So you can see we're always delivering voltage to the LEDs and we've got our PWM waveform being superimposed on top of this line here which is about 1.52 volts. So a PWM waveform taking the output voltage up to 3.36 and in this example we're not actually driving the LEDs at full power so it's only getting to about 25% before it fades back down. Uh, now you will notice it's a little bit noisy. I think we've reached the limit of something in my power supply design. Uh, if I probe V LED which is the output of the DC to DC converter, this is a bit noisy. Now, possibly uh, because of my long loop, we're probably picking up some fields here, uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if the high peak currents that we're seeing uh, just aren't capable of being delivered with this particular design, but I'm not too worried. Um, the supply into the microcontroller is off a linear regulator, and that seems to be pretty smooth. A little bit of noise again, I think, from this loop here. Um, so a bit of noise on the LED supply rails isn't going to cause an issue for the circuit. It might be a bit noisy EMC-wise, but I'm not too concerned about that. And so this effect is quite nice. They're all fading in and out together, but you get a little bit of a shimmer just as the LEDs change colour and just as they all get out of sync slightly. I think that's quite a nice effect. But uh, it looks like everything's working properly now. I still need to replace that one LED uh, that's faulty, but everything else seems to work now. So I've just got some work to do on the firmware to program in various effects. I've got some basic ones, as you saw, where it was fading in and out and all fading together. Uh, there's another one where it randomly, uh, it keeps them all illuminated, but it randomly picks one channel to um, fade up and down uh, to give kind of a random effect. Uh, but the overall concept is working quite nicely. So that's just using some automatically color changing LEDs and then hacking them slightly so we have some additional control that we wouldn't normally have. And I think it's coming out looking really quite nicely. So a big thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. These PCBs ended up being uh, much bigger and consequently uh, the shipping was quite expensive for these, but PCBWay provided them for this video. So a big thank you to PCBWay. Don't forget to visit them if you're thinking about getting some boards made. And once I get my website finally sorted, uh, I will put all of the design files for all of my projects on there. In the meantime, if there's one that interests you, um, do email me uh, on my YouTube contact page and I'll do my best to provide the PCB files for you. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Any thoughts and comments, don't forget to leave them in the comments section down below. And until next time, thanks for watching.